What is up you guys, I'm Charbix and today I'm going to be reacting to 5 disturbing channels that disappeared from YouTube by Top 5's. I haven't reacted to a Top 5 videos in a long time, but hopefully this will be quite... I can't really say funny because it doesn't freaking sound like it's going to be. It sounds like it's going to be like channels that shouldn't be on the site that were now, you know, taken off the site. That's what I'm thinking. But um, yeah, I might have to do some censoring. If it is like that, but anyway, with that being said, the original link's in the description. Make sure you guys go subscribe to Top 5, so without any further ado, let's begin. Oh man, I miss that sound. Since 2005, YouTube has evolved from a little known- I mean, I freaking remember that, the old layout, and you get to rate them with the stars. Oh, the good old days. ...video streaming website to a Google-owned media giant taking over the internet and changing society at large. Regardless, there have been a fair share of controversial, sometimes confusing channels that on closer inspection, leave the viewer with an uneasy feeling. So here are five mysterious oh, channels goodness. that disappeared from YouTube. Hit those lights, sit back. Oh no. <laughs> oh boy, Mr. here we go. Peeper. This Mr. Peeper? Like a, a peeping Tom? There was a channel based on that? This channel is one of the creepiest and spine chilling ever uncovered on YouTube. The channel in question was called Mr. Peeper and featured a series of videos taken from a first person style vantage point. That included stalking a couple of young women and playing unbelievably horrible pranks on them. The first woman was recorded through her living room window, watching TV and totally unaware of the videotaping outside. I hope this is a friggin' prank. What is wrong with people? What is wrong with people? Don't do this. Don't friggin' go see a psychologist or something, okay? Mr. Peeper then enters her home after she goes to bed. What? And while in the entryway, he records his reflection very briefly, revealing a scary Halloween-style mask. He then goes outside and rings the doorbell, to which the woman finds a burning stuffed animal sitting ablaze on her patio. While she fran it almost seems set up, actually. I hope it's set up. I hope this is all just a prank. ...frantically calls someone on the phone. Mr. Peeper jumps out from behind a chair, causing the woman to scream. And then the video ends. In between the two separate sequences... What?! Mr. Peeper posted an unsettling clip of him driving through vague countryside, with what sounds like another person struggling in the back, possibly gagged or with their mouth taped. Got to love the weird side of YouTube. With the second woman, Mr. Peeper follows her into a library and plays tricks with the lights while she searches for books. After a few minutes of teasing, he then follows her back to her house, where he hides underneath the deck and attempts to film up the woman's skirt. I really hope this is all just like um, an elaborate prank or something. Or not even a prank, but just more like a, a video series that someone decided to do for YouTube. Like... I did not know this was a thing that happened. How old is this? How old is this back from like 2005 or 2006 when YouTube first started? Because it's hard to believe that this is the thing that actually went on, you know? This then transitions to another terrifying prank where Mr. Peeper sticks a needle halfway into the wood oh. and hides it under leaves. Only to. Don't. See, I, I, when I'm walking, I'm afraid of something stepping on something like that. If there's like a nail or a needle in, in like the sidewalk and it's just covered, or if you're walking at night and you just can't see anything, I'm afraid of that kind of crap happening. And th look at this, there, there's an example of crazy people who do it. Don't do this kind of stuff, okay? To record the woman walking out barefoot the next day and stabbing herself unexpectedly. It only gets worse, however, when on a different- That's hard to believe though, but that is hard to believe that you would catch her Stepping on it when it's just in one little area like what are the odds of that happening? When she could have stepped anywhere else that almost makes it seem as if it was planned I really that's the, that's the angle. I'm going for I'm going for it is all a sketch or whatever. Okay I don't want to believe this At night. Mr. Peeper attempted to break into her house But is foiled by a guard dog keeping watch outside He doesn't give in though and goes to a grocery store and tapes himself buying rat poison and dog food Oh no and puts outside near the oh. woman's house Oh no. This video ends with the guard dog finding the poisoned food and beginning to eat it. Oh As no. As you can imagine, both of these situations are quite grim, disgusting, and incredibly scary happenings. Some viewers claim the videos were fake and part- That's what I'm hoping it is. I mean, it could be fake, kind of seems as if it is. 
And I'm just gonna go with it. Part of an art project or filmmaking web series. Hopefully. Pointing to the supposed acting of the second woman when she talks on the phone and steps on the needle. Others highlight Mr. Peeper's expert editing tricks and distorted voiceovers being simple production value. In addition to the dramatic music playing over certain jump scare moments, However, it is possible that these special effects were included as a sick way to maximize the already creepy nature of the stalking tapes. I'm hoping this is all a big joke or sketch. Seriously, WTF is wrong with people. All of the actions are very plausible and the authenticity of following women home isn't a far-fetched claim. One publication on the internet claims that- Wait, who's reading- wait, is that- the wait, wait, what? This is a freaking night and you're reading a book? It it in the middle of like a park at night? You're asking for trouble doing that. That's a, just seems like a bad idea if you ask me. Women home isn't a far-fetched- Yeah, she's reading a book at like night. No. Claim. One publication on the internet claims that Mr. Peeper is just the name of the channel and the videos are actually recovered films from an SD card taped to the roof of an abandoned car out in the woods found by a random person and then uploaded onto the internet. Now, why anyone would ever post such disturbing images without a call for action is beyond comprehension. Maybe it's because people be crazy. But it would certainly add another creepy twist to the already crazy circumstances. Eventually, the videos were downloaded and re-uploaded by a third-party account called Pacemaker Studios. But the Mr. Peeper channel was removed by YouTube due to multiple and severe violations of YouTube's policy on nudity or sex content. Wait, what? Okay, I assume you didn't show it then, because I'm like, wait, what? I didn't see any of that. Why were people nude in it? So I guess they were filming them when they were changing or something? No, no. I really hope this is all like a sketch for school or something. And while there was never any grotesque or blatant nudity on screen, it was more of the insinuation of what was happening behind the scenes that probably prompted YouTube to take action. Oh! Regardless, let's hope YouTube didn't stop there and inform the government about the channel getting the proper authorities to investigate the legitimacy of Mr. Peeper. That friggin' one was nuts. That was nuts. I kind of expected some things to be weird when I started this. Like, obviously, the channels disappeared from YouTube, so they obviously, you know, were questionable or whatever. But I wasn't expecting that. That's nuts. That's nuts. I really hope that was a sketch. Like, the one where the lady steps on the nail or the needle, that kind of makes me think it is a sketch just because you know what are the odds that would happen and like what are the odds you would actually catch it on camera at the time i'm kind of thinking it's a sketch and i'm gonna go with that because i don't want to believe it's real toy freaks i remember this this is like this is like last year or the year before this is recent this is freaking recent a couple of years back youtube enforced a purge of hundreds upon hundreds of channels that exploited children through disturbing images and potentially harmful situations one of these channels was the hugely popular Toy Freaks channel. Toy Freaks started in 2015 by single father Greg Chisholm, who had gained a small following in years prior with a lawn care platform. Okay, why in the world does this man have a baby pacifier in his mouth? I don't need to see any more to get the impression that this is gonna be strange. And a side channel posting family videos. He started noticing that some of the videos he posted of him and his two girls gained more views than others and after deeper analysis, discovered with the right titles, tags, and actual content, he could profit off of his silly videos. See, I, I didn't know the story behind this, the Toy Freak channel or whatever. I remember, I think, Phil DeFranco talking about it, but I don't remember exactly what happened or, or you know, what was going on. So I, I, this is, this is interesting. So he's basically chasing views like most YouTubers, so... That's nothing new, but he's doing it in a very weird way, shall we say? At least that's the way it seems like. Unfortunately, these silly videos turned into bizarre, gross skits between him and his daughters. Gross. These videos ranged from eating weird foods that stimulated vomiting, creepy performances by Chisholm in scary Halloween masks and makeup, dangerous stunts, and even physical discomfort. For example, one- oh, okay, I, I don't wanna- I'm gonna have to censor this. This looks like her mouth's bleeding. What, what the frig am I getting into here? The video displayed a recording of one of the girls losing a baby tooth, spewing blood oh. as she cried and shouted. While Greg always argued- Why would you film that and upload it? <laughs> Whatever. Some people shouldn't be parents. His daughters gave their consent for such strange and sickening actions. It certainly stimulated unsettling emotions by quite a few viewers and eventually YouTube brass. Despite the intense subject matter, Toy Freaks was actually a very popular channel. 
at one Yeah, I think it had like a few million subscribers or something. Point, it was in the top 100 most viewed YouTube channels of all time and gained over eight and a half million subscribers in two years. Eight? I didn't know it was that big. Market analytics calculated Greg had made over $13 million in revenue from advertisements alone, which introduces a question. $13 million? How many people were watching this channel? They just said 8 million, you idiot. ...of morals and profiting off your children, let alone children acting out gross performances. In the end, this is what prompted YouTube officials to delete toy freaks as they cracked down on similar content creators. 100 million views! What? A frog in the tub, Annabelle freaks out, not a toy video. Yeah, definitely not a toy video. Look at the dislike ratio, that's really high dislikes. However, one must consider more than what we saw in the small videos uploaded by Greg. The costumes and creepy characters they created were more than just Halloween tricks, and the type of persuasion that might- 339 million views! Bad Baby Victoria Gumball Surprise Egg Gross Annabelle and Crybaby Daddy Toy Freaks. I, I don't even know what to say, like, I still don't think this is as bad as the first one with the guy stalking. This one, it just seems like the father's using the kids for money. I mean, it's definitely in a weird way. Definitely not good. I don't know. I hope off camera he was a good father. To be needed to encourage two young minds to allow such dark tomb foolery has to be questioned. Yeah, that was a freaking weird one too. That was a very weird one. I really hope the uh, the father was a good dad off camera. It seems like a case of Jake Paul or something. Cause you know what Jake Paul, they always kept trying to outdo themselves and outdo themselves by like, you know, chasing views and whatnot. And maybe that's the kind of case that happened with the dad where the dad realized that got him views so he kept doing it and then kept trying to up it and up it and up it. Maybe that's what happened. I really hope that is because if not, why? How is he a father? Meet Sleep. On March the 28th, 2014, one of YouTube's strangest mysteries came to light when the channel titled Meet Sleep joined the YouTube streaming website. Popularly known as Just Meet, Meet Sleep went on to post 91 times in brain-bending fashion, using harsh editing techniques, uncomfortable audio sequences, and involving content bordering on explicit. Honestly, just looks like they are trying to give people epilepsy or something. Why is it flashing so much? Embedded within these strange videos were secret codes that could be cracked by serious and imaginative viewers by paying attention to words, sounds, and images frequently used. While none of it led- So wait, so the person was posting videos with hidden messages inside them? Like, what were the messages about? Can we have some, like, what, what, what were the messages? Led to an ultimate hidden secret or buried treasure. It's Wait, what? imaginative viewers by paying attention to words, sounds, and images frequently used. While none of it led to an ultimate hidden secret or buried- None of it led to a, a hidden secret or anything? What, so it's just for fun? Buried treasure. It stumped many audience members and forced conspiracy theorists' minds to run crazy. The channel wasn't all fun coding cracking, however. A lot of bizarre, unsettling videos made users believe uh. the film was shot by a possible serial killer, potentially a cannibal to boot. How does that make sense? I mean, what here gives you the idea or impression that this is from a serial killer? I mean, it's weird F, but still nothing is shown to lead to the conclusion that there is a serial killer involved. Some of the content revolved around themes of kidnapping and stalking, and the point of view from which the shots were portrayed seemed to suggest the person behind the camera was following someone or at least up to no good. Well, then- No, I don't, I don't know if I believe that. I don't know if I believe that. Like, if they put that much work into the editing, like, that's a lot of editing, right? They're including secret messages, so obviously it's unintentionally. If you put that much work into the editing, obviously it means you care about it. So it seems like it's more than just like a random video uploaded to the internet, right? It seems like there's some kind of, I don't know if I'd say passion, but there seems like there's a lot of caring behind the editing, so- uh, as you know what I mean, None I don't of these know. proclamations proved true. It sparked heavy debate and acquisitions as angry and disgusted viewers started analyzing the videos for the actual locations of the houses and started harassing those who lived there. The madness came to an end in January of 2016 when- Two years ago, or three at this point. Exactly three at this point. We're in January now. Meat Sleep deleted their entire catalog and uploaded one last video titled No More. They explained that the entire project was curated by eight individuals across Japan, Germany, Estonia, Netherlands, the United States, Canada, Australia, and Brazil. The videos were produced with professional equipment and the creators could no longer live threatened lives for a simple YouTube puzzle. Thus the- 
So, yeah, so that kind of explains it. I mean, I definitely wasn't expecting it to be like a collab between a whole bunch of people around the world, but they obviously put a lot of caring into the editing, and since they put a lot of caring into the editing, it obviously means they had a lot of passion behind what they were kind of doing. The entire operation ceased, and Meat Sleep wasn't heard from again. As of today, the channel is completely void of content. However, you can find most of Meat Sleep's content on third-party websites or loyalist YouTube channels. I wouldn't say they did anything criminal. I mean, all they did was some crazy editing, and apparently that's enough to get you classified as a criminal. But it's definitely ominous, I guess, if that's the right word. It's definitely got this weird eeriness to it, which I, it seems like it was edited to be like that. Shay St. John. I remember this! I remember this! Or videos of this person. I think I've seen the couple before. They're freaking weird. This next channel wasn't so much a mystery as it was completely fascinating with a bit of conspiracy theory history associated with its creator. The channel in question was Elastic Spastic Plastic Fantastic, featuring the character of Shay St. John. St. John first made contact oh. with the internet through a live journal blog in 2003 and was portrayed as a female human badly scarred from a near fatal car accident. That's a weird plot. However, instead of prosthetic limbs, St. John used bits and pieces of mannequin parts to complete her damaged figure. She claimed her face was so badly ruined that it was too grotesque to show, thus always wearing masks, wigs, and facial disguises during videos. Yes, I, I've seen a couple of clips with this person before. I didn't really know the whole backstory behind it though. So while her formation was quite unsettling, St. John always had pleasant motives behind the creepy costume. The genius behind the production was Eric Fournier. Eric had gained fame in the 1990s as a member of a couple of punk rock bands, The Blood Farmers and Skeletor. It was a musician that was behind it? What? It was during these years as a musician that the idea for Shay St. John came to be, when Eric incepted his first project with the St. John character titled Stumpwater Salad. After many years of filming this and other clips of the St. John Chronicles, Eric sidestepped YouTube and released 30 of his videos on a DVD called The Trigger Compilations in 2006. Eric edited and produced all of the content, just as he had with his YouTube channel. So although this is weird and the character here that has been created is weird, it's literally the least weird thing from this video basically. That's weird. Unfortunately, Eric passed away from internal bleeding complications due to his alcoholism. He was only 42 at the time of his death but did leave behind a fascinating case of content creation. That's weird, that's very weird. I had no clue any, uh, about any of this. Like, I obviously I've seen this character before, but I didn't really know the backstory to it. I would have never expected to be a, a musician that was behind it. It's interesting to think about the inspirations for Shea St. John. While some may argue it was nothing more than a unique imagination, all of us use subconscious emotions in the stories we tell and St. John was a physically scarred figure, and may have been a representation of hidden emotional or mental scars the creator faced himself. I mean to go from making music as a musician in a band to making these types of videos is obviously a sign that something is wrong, don't you think? One intriguing theory that did arise before he died was that Eric Fournier was actually behind the Max Headroom incident. While it was never confirmed, there does seem to be many similarities between the Max Headroom and Shea St. John such as the camera techniques, lighting in certain videos, use of masks and disguises, and the overall understanding of video production. It's a stretch, but certainly not impossible. The channel was discontinued by YouTube in 2017, along with Eric's personal website. 2017? Last year? How long ago did he pass away? But you can still check out Shea St. John recordings on a variety of YouTube channels. Anyway, that's it for this video. Uh, if you want to, if you want to watch the rest of this, make sure you go check out the original link in the description. Man, these are freaking weird. These are freaking weird. Uh, <laughs> that last one there that I reacted to, that was weird. But then, if you compare it to some of the other ones, is it really that weird? Is it really that weird? It seems more normal compared to the first two. But anyway, if you guys like this, make sure you give it a thumbs up. Possibly share a friend. If you do it, subscribe to your other family. Also, make sure you guys go subscribe to Top 5. So, links in the description. I'll see you guys next time. Boop.